Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I will be taking you through my process of urban sketching and how I make this kind of a final finish of painting. So the first thing that I have done is made a really rough sketch of my particular drawing. Sometimes I don't draw it at all. I just completely start painting from the beginning itself. I don't really wait uh, to create a drawing. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I have created a rough sketch and now I'm going to fill in the colors. So I'm starting with the top, which is with the sky. So the brushes I'm using are the Escora Travel brushes and the paints that I'm using is Magello Mission uh, Gold Watercolors. Um, it's a professional set and I love the uh, vibrancy of the colors. So feel free to use any colors that you want. You don't necessarily have to use the same colors as me. This is more for you to understand my process and to see uh, what are the different ways that you can do urban sketching and how to fill in your colors. So if you notice now uh, what I'm doing is I'm blocking out the colors. I'm using a nice mix of uh, yellow and yellow ochre um, to create um, this color and a little bit of brown on top which will give a little bit of shadow. So my base yellow is still a little wet which is why my brown is blending in quite easily with it and if you notice I'm not being too perfect in the way that I'm applying the colors so that's the fun part about urban sketching or urban painting you can just feel free and apply colors the way you want to it doesn't necessarily have to blend in if some of it goes into your sky let it uh, that's the fun part about it um, make it really fun to play along with make it uh, pretty exciting and have it in your own style you don't have to uh, make it like exactly what you see out there or not even you don't even have to do the exact same thing that i've done use my style and then add in your own uh, version of it and see how it comes For some of the smaller details, I am using the tip of the brush, but if you notice, I am not being too perfect. I am just letting it blend in if it's bleeding in one color into another color. In urban sketching, I allow it to happen like that. Um, so I do end up using a little more water when I am doing urban sketching because it gives a very uh, rustic look to my final painting. So this way, I am going to now fill in colors into each one of the building uh, which are right next to each other. And then we will be using um, Indian ink um, and a dip pen to add in the final details. If you want to do it in the other style where you don't draw first and then you paint directly then uh, it's advisable to um, have a little bit of a hand of drawing so make sure that you practice drawing a little more everyday basis and then just draw out basic shapes and understand proportions it's very important for us to do that now in this case here most of these are rectangles and they are squares and uh, it's single perspective, one point perspective, so it's still easy. It's flat on um, the buildings from the angle that we are seeing it. So it's fairly easy to still paint this without much of a drawing knowledge. But if you're going to be doing complicated uh, ones like two point perspective, three point perspective, then I would highly recommend you to start practicing your drawing skills, improve it. Um, every day just take what like 15 minutes to draw out certain things and just observe it keep something in front of you look at it draw it and then observe and see whether the proportions are coming fine uh, it will help you a lot in your uh, um, urban sketching or any other kind of art form that you're doing
you also don't really need to do a black outline in the end but um, i'm somebody who absolutely loves doing the black outline which is why i will be doing that in the end um it gives a lot of uh, interesting features that i can add to it like at this point i still love the painting because it gives a really good idea that there are buildings right next to each other sticking next to each other there are these really nice windows that are popping out and if you notice a lot of uh, white space is left in a lot of areas which is what is giving the definition for it so that's an interesting part about uh, watercolor painting the more white spaces you leave uh, the more it comes to life the less white space you leave the less it kind of looks realistic like if you look at the sky in some areas it's really light in some areas it's dark in some areas there's like a hint of white uh, space here and there so what happens is it starts looking very realistic it makes your brain perceive it in a very beautiful way it is able to put everything together so this is what i absolutely love about watercolors and when you're doing a novel sketching or a live sketching like this uh, you just go with the flow you you have no control over how the final thing is going to look like and that's the most exciting part about it The medium that I've used over here is watercolors, but you can also try the same thing with gouache. You can try the same thing with your uh, color pencils, crayons, any medium that you want to. Just give it a shot and see how it comes. Uh, what are the different details that you would need to add? What are the steps that would uh, help you to create these details? Now, again, another thing is you don't have to put all the single details which are in front of you. Pick your part. Like you can use a nice grid system and to just take a picture and then you know put that particular building like over here i've got about six buildings but you can just do like two or them or three or just even one you know change it into a vertical orientation instead of a horizontal orientation that i have over here and just focus on one and make the sky and left rest of the things can just be blurred you don't have to show everything which is out there Urban sketching does is also gives you room for a lot of experimentation like over here I've used like a really interesting purple for my ground and you know I, I'm quite excited to see how it will look when it dries uh, that's an interesting thing you know your ground is not really purple but I am still going to use it to see how it comes out I am now using a um, dip pen uh, mapping nib it's also called as mapping nib uh, and then i'm using uh, ink so the ink that i'm using today is sumi ink i really like it i've been using it for a while right now and i find this to be very very um, smooth and it, it's not very thick the ink so it's really nice the flow of it is good i love using this dip pen it just makes everything i think so beautiful uh, what the difference between your regular um, drawing them uh, versus your mapping nib is that uh, your drawing nib will not be able to really give you like a thick and thin line but with your mapping nibs you can do that um, so I had this set by Joseph Gillot and uh, so the nib is from there but my holder broke uh, which is why I got this new holder I'll probably put up the links of this in my description box um, if I haven't and you want to know just leave a comment over here and I will uh, guide you towards where I get these things from you're new to the style of open sketching or even to like 
inks then I would suggest you to probably start off first with pigment liners or pens uh, get the hang of it and then from there if you have to move into doing uh, with ink then you can get the Indian ink and you could get like a, a basic uh, oblique pen holder because what happens with oblique pen holder is uh, uh, it, it, it makes it much easier to draw uh, as opposed to a straight one that i'm having right now so it's good to start with an oblique pen holder you can get an eco nib you can get the indian ink and you can just start off you can get the basic drawing ink it has two styles in that one is waterproof and the other one is not waterproof so i prefer using the waterproof one because a lot of times after making my outlines or making these details in case i uh, want to add any other paints to it or colors or depth to it it gives me room and freedom to add that at any time if i do not use a waterproof ink i cannot do that because everything will smudge into each other so my personal preference is always the waterproof ink but feel free go ahead do your research figure out which one you like and then take that now here you can see how it's all coming to life um, the ones which have not been outlined still do look good but um, i love creating this contrast by using like this dark black color jet black and making these thick and thin lines um, sometimes i even spatter um, the color at the end but maybe today i'm not going to splatter it uh, let's see how uh, it goes Case you're using a pigment liner and you still want to give like a thick and thin line effect then all you need to do is go over your lines multiple times in some areas where you want to make it thick or use two different um, pens like one could be 0 0.5 one could be one um, or 0 0.7 0 0.8 so you know you can mix it up and make your lines with different uh, nib sizes um, so my personal preference is always 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 if i have to do urban sketching with uh, pigment liners Also find outlining to be very therapeutic it feels really nice it is also very beautiful to look at uh, in fact this video over here has been uh, sped up it is um, the speed is about 2x um, of what I would normally uh, take so uh, you can imagine how much it would have taken me to uh, do this and I really love doing this it makes me very happy it um, you don't have you don't have to really think at that time you know all you're doing is just adding details so in a lot of places I've just speeded it up or I've just like you know um, try to show you some more um, details of it otherwise the video will get like really long uh, so um, this is the process of it and I hope you enjoyed um, watching this process and you learned how to create uh, very beautiful urban sketches um, using this video so if you're new here uh, do consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already and don't forget to hit the bell icon because that way you will get a notification each time i put up a video i put up a lot of videos on uh, um, art supplies on how to do different kinds of things reviews and anything and everything to do with art i hope you enjoyed today's process and i will see you again um, very soon in my next video now this is over let's have a look at it in close up and the best part is removing the masking tape and seeing how the painting looks at the end so one trick with your masking tape is you have to always remove it from um, your painting in the opposite direction otherwise against the painting basically otherwise it will start tearing a lot and your paper would end up tearing so be a little careful about that and also don't leave your masking tape on your painting uh, for too many hours especially like you know if sometimes you leave it for two days three days 
is going to tear a lot so be careful about that you can see a slight uh, edge has been chipped off for mine but um, I love the final effect of how this painting has come out I hope you enjoyed it too if you did uh, do leave a comment about what you like and also if you have any specific tutorials you would want me to do I would request you to add it in the comment section here so I can uh, consider making them thank you